today I'm going to show you how to make Tech House in the style of Hot Since 82. I'm Will from EDM Tips and in today's music production tutorial I am producing Tech House in the style of Hot Since 82. As usual you can download the free project file and all of the samples completely free below this video. Just hit that button below and if you haven't already subscribe to my channel for tutorials like this each and every week. This is a genre and an artist I got so many requests for over the past few weeks so that is what I've decided to do today. We will be going into the kick and the bass. We will be going into the percussion. And we will be going into all the little different things that make up those really cool grooves. So why would you even want to produce in the style of someone else? Well, it's a great way to learn new techniques. It doesn't mean that you want to copy their music wholesale, but if you really listen and you want to capture the same vibe, it's such a good way to improve your music production skills. If you dig this video, give it a big fat thumbs up, share the love, share it with your friends, and without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so first let's have a talk about the vibe quickly. Hot Since 82 has got really nice deep chugging kind of progressive house feel, lots of interplay between the rhythm and the bass. And it's, to be honest, Boy's got skills. I've been listening to his stuff over the last few days to prepare for this. And yeah, his productions are super tight. So after we've discussed the vibe, which we have, next thing is to name this bad boy. I'm gonna call it Hot Since 81. Um, you can figure out why that might be. So let's just whack that in there. And right, let's get the tempo, let's get the kick sorted. I'm thinking that it's probably 125 would be a good, good tempo. Yeah, sounds about right. So let's get the kick in. Now I might try layering kicks. I'm gonna layer a couple of kicks. So I'll go to my favorites. Really good to have favorites folders makes production much easier. So I like the pop, the top end pop of this kick, but I like the low end weight of this kick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the filter button here and I'm going to filter out the low end of my top kick. Let's have a little listen. Take it down a bit. Nice. And then for the low kick, I'm going to put the filter on, but choose a, a, a low pass filter and again, roll it off. So I've got the Best of both worlds, basically. So let's quickly program those in. Nice. And I'm also going to put the sustain um, on each to full and the release to zero. So the kicks actually end when the when the um, MIDI note ends, but then you've got that click. So we need a bit more release to stop that clicking. There, cool. So next we're gonna work on the percussion. Okay, so what do we need to do? First get a, kit, uh, a clap. So let's just go to claps, drum hits, claps, something short. It's gonna really kind of just cut through, but it's not too overbearing. So we'll put that there, program it in. Adjust the volume slightly. I'm gonna actually put the kick to my, oh, the kick's already at minus six, that's good. So we've got plenty of headroom on the master fader. Okay, on to the next part of the percussion. I'm gonna use a rim shot to add some extra groove like that. So we'll go to, I'm just going to search actually, rim shot. Cool, that one will do. And I'm just going to program it in. Going a bit closer. I'm actually going to choose a different rim shot because I don't like that one. I want something that sounds like it's from a drum machine, um, probably like a 909. Yeah, like that 909 drum machine. Nice, so we're just gonna loop that and then switch it up for the second bit. 
just to add a bit of variation. And then let's get on to the next part of the rhythm. So that would be on my list, the closed hat. So we want something really short and sharp. I'm gonna go for uh, probably an 808 um, closed hat. So, you know, nothing too complicated. Just put them on the 16th. So let's get in, draw them on the 16th. But I do want to add a bit of movement to this. So I'm going to add uh, a little bit of delay to get them bouncing around. You could use something like auto pan as well, but I'm gonna use uh, ping pong delay. So let's just, just to give it some interest. So we'll go up to delay and then stick one on there. Put ping pong on, turn the feedback down. Um, okay, I might need to tweak it slightly. Checking in mono. I've got this on my mono channel to check on mono with a keyboard shortcut. Cool, so now we've got a bit of width in those. Next thing to do would be, I'm gonna add some open hats, but I'm gonna make them with white noise. And now this is something I don't usually do, so this is a new trick for you. If you load in a simple um, like operator, I guess, I'm just using the Ableton plugins in this um, tutorial, so we could call that like white noise. Uh, we'll just call it NWN open because it's gonna be the open hat. So let's have a quick look at this. If we hit that, here, where are you? My MIDI keyboard, there, at the moment it's obviously a tone. So for the wave, we're gonna choose um, white noise, and then we're gonna make that into a hat. So first I'm gonna, well, I'll turn it down a bit because it's pretty harsh. And then we're gonna program in the open hat loop. So, and then we're gonna tweak that to make it sound like our hi-hat, our open hat. And the way we're gonna do that is, we are going to adjust the ADSR. And then we're gonna put some EQ on the end, get rid of some of those frequencies. just a different way of making a hat. We, we're gonna tweak this later when we get to the mixing stage and when we've worked out what key this actual tune's gonna be in, which the bass line's gonna do, show us very soon. Um, but this will do for the time being. Okay, onto the bass. The bass is going to be, and we will be doing more on the rhythm, but we want to work out the bass first, so then we can interplay the rhythm. Now, Hot Since 82's Got, usually has an interplay of a couple of different basses to really add to the groove. Um, so this will be our main bass though. And for this, I'm going to use Wavetable and go into bass. Just have a listen. And I want some kind of FM kind of sounding bass. This might be a good one. That's cool. It's wide. If I tap, uh, if it's low velocity, the filter's down. If I hit it harder, it's up. So that's going to give us some nice movement and variation. So, so let's program in a, bat, a really simple pattern. I'm just doing this on the fly as I feel. Nice. As I said, all the sounds are sounding a little bit dodgy at the moment, but we will be um, improving them. It's all about feeling the vibe though. And then, 
This is where we can play with the velocity and open up the filter a bit. Like so. Turn that hat down a bit. Cool, so you can hear the filter opening up there. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb to that bass on the auxiliary channel. So this is my the way I've got my auxiliary channel set up. I've got a reverb there, a utility to boost up the gain, and I've got an EQ rolling off the low end, so we can add some of that to the bass. So you can really hear we've got we're already getting that nice deep um yeah rolling vibe at the moment as i said i'm doing this all in one take so be forgiving okay next thing bosh and i do it in one take so you can see the whole process i, I do have notes though obviously to help me because i'm not that cray cray um groove tom kick cool yeah now let's add a little bit of extra low end energy we're going to add Kind of like a tom sound, but we're going to use a different kick instead of a tom, just to augment that bass line and give it a bit more groove. So that's quite nice because it's just a soft bass almost. There's no really hard kind of toppy attack. So we could use this and in our kicks. So that just adds to the groove a bit. I'm going to tweak the ADSR a little bit, maybe make it a bit shorter. So I'm just gonna loop that as well. Cool, so let's just do that. But if we look at the bass line, we can see it's in the key of D. So let's just try and tune this Tommy kick, this Tom kick to the, um, to the key of A, uh, sorry, D as well. So if we, if we play it and roll over on the spectrum analyzer here, we can see it's hitting A. Now, if we want that to hit a D, that's one, two, three, four, five semitones up. Um, so if we transpose it up five semitones, that should now hit um, D. Yeah, so you can see the fundamental frequency now is D, so it's gonna be in tune with the bass. But it might be too high, so if we do five minus 12, to take an octave down, that would be minus seven. That's better, because it's nice and deep. All about the low end, baby. Right, okay, on to the next thing. Let's get some more. Um, we've got other basses to do as well, but I'm just gonna add some more groove to the, to the drums. And the way I'm gonna do that is, firstly, by actually turning the drums on. And that, that open hat that we've made is quite harsh, so I'm gonna just tweak that a bit more. And we're gonna add a reverse clap to, to add a bit more groove there, so I'm just gonna go to claps. Uh, reverse claps. Nice. Whoops, need to load this into my drum rack. So with this, we are going to add the, make the sustain full and then turn everything down so that when the MIDI note 
is ends, then the sound ends, and that way we can have it end exactly where the clap hits. Okay, so let's just work out where to put these reverse claps. Hit there, to signal the end of the bar. Cool. Now we are going to add some more groove. We are going to add a loop. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to preview some loops. Um, let's call this loop because we need some nice high end, um, yeah, high end hats going on there as well. So I'm just going to search through some of my loops and wait till I hear something where some of the frequencies and the groove are right. And we can, we can take out the notes we don't need. That sounds pretty cool. Like I can hear the real high end is coming through. We don't need the kick, sorry, we don't need the claps on it though. So I'm just gonna loop the first part of it. Just to get the hats vibe on the go. I'll make sure I've just tweaked out, make sure that we're not having the pre-transient of that clap. And we can hear there's low end there that we need to get rid of as well. So I'm just gonna loop this. I'm going to call it house loop. I'm going to make it green because I like my green. And so let me know if you're liking this so far. Give me a hell yeah below if you are. Let me know what genre you want me to cover. Now, we've got lots to get through, so let's get back to it. But do leave that comment because I love it. OK, let's get rid of some of those low frequencies. And we're going to do it in the mix as well to make sure we get rid of the right ones. That's already sounding pretty cool. I'm going to use this free plugin by Isotope, uh, by Ozone, sorry. No, it's by Isotope and it is the Ozone. It's the free thing, the free imager. I've put the link to it below this video, so grab that below, but it adds stereo width without causing phase issues and things like that. I'm going to check it in mono to make sure I'm not screwing it up. And that's just to add some more width in the high end. Okay, let's add that secondary bass. I'm going to call it reverse bass because that's what I'm going to do. Make it kind of a reverse -y bass to interplay with the current bass notes. So let's create that, call it reverse bass. I'm working through a lot of this stuff with my current students in the eight week EDM production masterclass too. So if you want like one-on-one -on -one tuition and that, check out the link below. But, whoops, top tip, don't pour water in your keyboard. Uh, right, what am I gonna use for this? I'm gonna use a, something simple I think. Um, no, I'll use, I'll use analog, because we haven't used that yet today. So. Let's get on our MIDI. And now let's start crafting a bit of a, a reverse sound. Now the way I'm going to do that is by um, adding some envelope, filter envelope, so it kind of goes whoop. It's a bit brassy. I'm going to add a sine wave as well to make it bassier and drop that down an octave. So let's just add some interplaying beats, um, bass notes where we, we think they should be. And again, the same thing, we're gonna add more um, filter cutoff 
when the velocity is harder. So we're going to turn the amp velocity controls off because we don't want the volume changing with the different velocities. We just want the filter frequency cutoff to change with the different velocities. Like so. But the trouble is we, well, it's not the trouble, but the thing is we want some um, reverb on this. So I'm just going to use the same reverb as the other bass. Don't know if that one's needed. The fewer elements you can have to add to the groove, the more yeah, the better it's going to be. So it's like Rich, Richie Horton's philosophy of having as few elements as possible to make sure that groove is solid. And we probably don't want those happening yet, maybe on the second run through. Perhaps just before these. Okay, on to the next thing. Let's check the magic list. There's orange, my favorite color out of all the oranges. Now we've got, yeah, okay, a bit, even a bit more groove. Needs more cowbell. If you remember my purple disco machine video last week, we had some cowbell in there. So we're gonna have a bit of that in this one as well. Samples, let's go to my cowbells. I could just search for them. I'm doing this all in my, uh, yeah, my personal sample collection, so. I'm not using Splice or Loop Cloud this week, just to just shake things up a bit. I've got a very, um, I've got a paucity of good cowbells in my personal collection. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna tune this to the track as well. First, turn it down. Let's select the drums. And I'm just gonna tune it using the transpose. That's something that Hot Since 82 does a lot of as well. Tuning different bits of percussion, tuning the interplaying synths, just to create everything, make sure it's in tune, sounding really solid. So let's program something in and we're gonna have it reinforce this bass groove. So it's almost like layering. like so. So it's just a reinfor reinforce a very simple groove. And I want to add some reverb to these separate clap elements. So I'm gonna open up, oh, I've already done it, it's already rooted. So if you open up these buttons here, you can, you can select um, you can right click create return chain then select your one of your global auxiliary channels there and then we'll just close that close this and now we've got these send controls here so we can feed in separate amounts of reverb or whichever effects you want to each separate drum so there's the room reverb I'm going to adjust the settings on that though it's a bit bit big Cool, so let's just copy and paste that cowbell loop. And I'm actually gonna add a clave as well. You know, those wooden stick things. Um, if I've actually got any on my computer. Cool, just to help it cut through a bit and it's gonna follow the same pattern as the cowbell. 
I might actually change up the pattern a bit to have it into play. Like so. Just add a few more of them. And this is something that would come in later, so this wouldn't be playing from, from the beginning. And I'm just going to copy and paste that. And I could even pan one left and one right. Add some room reverb. I might even choose a, a, a clap that kind of cuts through a bit more. Or just tweak the ADSR settings slightly to make it a bit punchier. Let's get back to the loop. Oh no, I know, it just needs no room reverb. No, that's good, all good. Okay, on to the next thing. Now we are going to have some kind of augmenting groove synth stabbed again move into that groove because that is the most important thing in this kind of music. You know, I could, oh, I could, this just makes me want to be an Ibiza, just dancing to this kind of music all night long at somewhere like DC 10. I don't know, it's DC 10 even open anymore. Right, let's get that augmenting synth in. Let's call it groove synth. And this is just going to be a really, really small stab. And that is what we are going to do with that. So again, I'm going to open up a synth. Um, let's use let's see if there's a another one in wavetable actually and i don't want to spend too long on this i just want to pick a sound that sounds about right that's going to hit the frequencies i want so let's have a listen at what synths there are I mean, anything really that's that's hitting the frequencies, it's going to be a really short note, and we're going to add some effects to it. So I'll call this Groove Synth. Just like that, that's that's all we're doing with that and we're gonna repeat it. And then we'll just choose a better sound and then put the effects on. Actually, that, that's gonna do fine in terms of sound. So I'm gonna just choose a delay and add a little bit of, um, yeah, ping pong to it. just to add a little bit of movement. But of course we want to make sure that we've rolled off the frequencies that we don't need. Maybe add some room reverb. It's very subtle this one. Kick up a bit. Just tweak the cutoff points. That's pretty heavy kick, man. Okay. 
on to the next thing, which is adding a bit more texture and groove. And we're getting there. As you've seen today, it's all about the groove, all about getting the different elements into playing with each other. Not really chord progressions and such as yet. So for the next thing, let's get a, um, a bit more groove with a, another synth. Um, let's just call this synth top. And I'm actually gonna use a sample for this. So I'm gonna go to my synth samples. And again, it, you don't need to spend a long time picking which one, because it's gonna be more amending it to our needs using the ADSR um, controls. So that one will do. Um, drop that in so it's a, a, a sampler. And I'm just going to create the MIDI clip, top synth, and again it's going to be in D, if we can hear it, thank you very much. Minus six, and I'm going to do this like this, six, on sixteenths, but the first two are going to be almost inaudible. It's just to add some groove. And you'll hear the, the, the importance of these delicate layers. You know, hear the depth that's added. Get some EQ on there, make sure we take out the low end that's not needed. You can see that's the fundamental frequency hitting there. Cool, okay, almost there. We might even add um, a little bit of vocals. Yeah, we'll add like a little, make a little vocal hook to add some, again, texture and flavor. Um, cool. Color that purple because that's the color I like. My vocals, uh, samples, vocals. Just going to use some old sample. I'm going to use that for like, um, I'm going to do two vocals. I'll do vocal um, texture and then I'll have a, a vocal which will be like a moment. So we could have it here, for instance, and then if we were to duplicate the track. You'll notice I haven't used the side chain compression at all. It's more important to get the sounds and the groove right and then use side chain compression. You know, don't, if you can do that, then when you do side chain compress, you're gonna get a better result because you've picked the right sounds, you've got the right groove. Oh, so it goes out to tune there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this vocal and then for this second one, I'm going to choose Complex Pro and I'm going to adjust the, I'm going to transpose it so it's, so it's in key, just by ear. Cool, and then I'm gonna blend the two clips together like this, so it's a bit of a seamless thing, and now our vocal sounds like this. So that is in all is well in the world of vocals. I'm just gonna add another auxiliary channel, I'm gonna call that vocals, and that's where I'm just gonna add some reverb and delay for those vocals. Um, yep, make sure that, of course, your that it's set to fully wet. Ping pong. And I'm gonna add some reverb to that as well to just soften it slightly. I still haven't set all these up since reinstalling the new computer. Um, so let's just get reverb, uh, like so. I'm gonna put it in there as well. And we can even add, um, you know, we could even add a bit of room reverb. And get some EQ on there. 
Come on EQ, come to Papa. And we're gonna add one of these, um, another one of these images on the free one, not the multi-band one, which comes with isotope um, suite. Cool, so in terms of that vocal texture, we are gonna go back to my vocals. That sounds pretty much in tune. Cool. So we're just gonna loop this first bit, like so. And then we're gonna apply some EQ and some a couple of other effects to it. And I've just fed this texture through the vocal auxiliary channel as well. And you know, this is where the arrangement is so important when it comes to music like this, because you've now got to make this interesting for six minutes or five minutes. And the way that you would do that would be using effect. We'll, we'll do a couple of examples, okay? I'm not gonna do the whole arrangement because we're kind of running out of time but um, I'll do a couple of examples of what you could do. But before I do that, I'm gonna add one more layer. I'm gonna add some texture. I'm gonna add some vinyl crackle just to give it some added, yeah, kind of vinyl feel. So I'll color that like an effect. Then I'll go into my samples, effects, and vinyl crackle. And I'm just gonna use a tiny loop of it and then process it slightly. So to find out what sounds good, let's just get the basses and the vinyl. Sounds like a Geiger counter. Got Chernobyl on this ass. And I'm gonna add some compression on there as well just to um, rein in some of those really loud crackles. If anyone hasn't seen that Chernobyl or Chernobyl or however you want to pronounce it program, that I think BBC Two did, it's well good. There are other telev ch television channels available. So yeah, let's just loop this a couple of times and we'll do some examples of what the arrangement might look like if you were gonna keep things interesting. You'd obviously want some effects as well, like white noise crashes. Nothing too over the top because this is a cool genre rather than a really, you know, in your face genre. So let's just call that white noise and find a simple sweep really quickly. FX sweeps. I like having to do this live because it kind of pressures me to make decisions fast. Something that should not be underestimated. Okay. Um, we can have that quiet add some reverb to it I'll, I'll actually add the um, effects from the vocals too so what we're going to do we've, we've looped it a few times um, I'm going to start by by just having the kick and the bass and we'll get rid of the, the, the drums. the main drop here and the way we're going to do that is not have the more we're not going to have the reverse bass yet and we're not going to have the second you know the doo doo at the end of the bass we'll leave that for the drop as a special treat 
So let's just quickly do that. Whoops. We'll leave the vocals off yet. And then when we do bring them in, we're going to use a filter, like an auto filter, and we're gonna automate the cutoff to come in like so. let's bring that in let's bring that in there that's going to sound better if we do that so we're going to copy and paste this and bring it in here and start the top synth In fact, let's let's make the build up a bit longer. Um, and the way we're gonna do that is by taking out some of the low end of the kick. And I'm just gonna do that by actually shortening the kick. Now I'll take out the low kick. And we're gonna add some sweep coming up. Get some white noise sweep on the go. Sweep up, nothing fancy. Keep it quiet, not too over the top. So that is the kind of way that you can, you know, make the arrangement interesting and then you bring other elements in as well. You might even change the top synth at some point so the pattern could be different. So yeah, that is my basic idea of how you can produce like hot since 82. Of course, as I said, you're not trying to copy someone's style, but trying to recreate music that you love will give you so many insights into different production techniques. It's one of the fastest ways that you can improve. I'm gonna do a bit more work on this before I uh, give it to you to download for free. So when you do download it, there's gonna be a few more things in there as well. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll catch you soon. Until next time, cheers and happy producing. So there you have it guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to download the project file and all the samples for free. Give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and until next time, cheers and happy producing. Thank you.